let's say that you have a single Kubernetes cluster and your boss wants three different dev teams to share the cluster. Capacity wise, this is a perfectly reasonable request. The combination of those teams won't overtax the underlying cluster nodes. What you need is a way to partition your Kubernetes cluster into three virtual clusters. We're talking about creating the illusion that each group has its own independent cluster. Each of these virtual clusters runs on the nodes managed by your Kubernetes cluster. This is what Kubernetes namespaces do. A namespace is like a virtual cluster or separate workspace. Namespaces provide a scope for object names. Kubernetes components are required to have a unique name inside of the namespace in which they reside. However, components in different namespaces can share the same name. An administrator can use namespaces to divide up cluster resources, like CPU and memory, between various groups of users. Each user group might be assigned a single namespace, and each namespace can be configured to enforce resource usage quotas, thereby preventing one group from starving out other groups. Note that components like pods, controllers, and services all reside in a namespace. However, other things like nodes and namespaces do not. Therefore, you cannot create a hierarchy of namespaces. Don't use namespaces just to segregate different versions of your cluster components. That's just overkill. Instead, you should use labels. Also, it's probably not a good idea to use namespaces when you don't have an obvious need for them yet. Here are some signs that you might need namespaces. Maybe you have many users on multiple teams. Or perhaps you need resource usage quotas for some teams. Or maybe you require completely segregated dev, QA, and production environments, but you only have a single underlying cluster to work with. Note that you probably won't need namespaces when dealing with small teams.